Okay, here we're into an episode of On the Rest from Off the Cuff to have a really cool review for you guys from the brand Merker Watch. A little about them, pretty much they're a China-based brand. Uh, and there's not a lot of other information that is out there about them apart from that, yeah, they make a lot of watches in China. Um, they do serve a really nice kind of uh, balance between vintage aesthetics and of course more modern specifications, which is always nice. And of course they are quite affordable. Now in terms of the type of watch, I consider this an everyday dress watch, some key computer tricks in design language. When you're looking for something you can uh, wear every day, of course, uh, that still also dresses up quite nicely. You're gonna want a clean classic, aesthetic with more of a minimalist design and of course something that is sensibly sized and in true Merker fashion this has a really extremely long name the new Merker Red 12 Business Levy Standard Manual Watch Crossline Dial Salmon Silver Dial <laughs> <laughs> and it's essentially Merker's take on the classic sector dial, combining the iconic JLC Master Control 25th Anniversary and the Longines Heritage sector dial, while adding, uh, you know, Breguet style numerals, as well as a signature red 12 hour marker. You can get these for $109 direct. And the link that was provided by Merker uh, actually will take you to a picture of a silver dial unit, but uh, I'm assured that that is the one that matches this special edition uh, uh, salmon dial, which it does have salmon in that really extraordinarily long name. So I guess you should be good to go. Um, of course, as usual with Merker products, they emailed me, reached out, um, and basically asked if I would be interested in checking this one out, and I was. I, I think it's definitely very cool and very different. So with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. Okay guys, so as you can see, pretty simple formula here. You're getting a great sector dial. Uh, it even has multiple finishes on that. Check that out. More of a satiny finish there in the center section, and then that nice brushed outer section. So it was nice to see that that different texturing, uh, which I think adds a nice bit of dimension and pop, actually wasn't omitted when they added that great uh, salmon colorway on top. Now, um, one of the nice things is this is a really nice salmon. Sometimes it can look a little bit too much like salmon, <laughs> the actual color of salmon, um, you know, and then you can argue about what the actual color of salmon is because, you know, there's a lot of ink does and dyes that are added. Um, but it, the nice thing is here, it's this really striking, that nice median, between a bit of a copper tone and as well as kind of that uh, pinkish hue though uh, versus going into a deeper and then you guys can see that red 12 adding a little bit something even more different so there's definitely a lot of visual interest on this dial especially considering the other numerals are uh, you can see more of a just a plain silver uh, color so yeah there's a lot look at all these colors happening at the same time then you got blued hands uh, it's definitely not kind of your more basic affair that you might be used to seeing within this space especially at this price point now in terms of the dimensions it's 31 i'm sorry 38 and a half millimeters in diameter uh 12.7 millimeters thick and 46 and a half millimeters lug to lug uh stainless steel brushed and uh, there's a bit of polishing here and there like you can see on the crown there if i can get it to focus sorry about that here we go a little bit of polish on the crown and but the majority of this is going to be pretty much brushed um really yeah even at the side angles you can see even brushed there a really cool stepped bezel which we've seen uh from this brand previously and you know it still carries over quite nicely in this new iteration the crystal itself is a box domed k1 mineral so the nice thing about that k1 is it's going to be very clear no risk of any types of milky outer rings or anything like that and of course it's going to be better in terms of scratch resistance and uh better in scratch resistance versus uh, plexiglass and then better in uh, cracking and shattering resistance compared to sapphire and it's also much cheaper so uh, there's that which is also very helpful 
Now, like you mentioned, this does have a nice stepped bezel there, as you guys can see, uh, which does help kind of break up the visual lines uh, that you're going to see here. And, you know, there are some segmenting within the dial, so I think it's nice to see that, you know, having a couple steps, especially even though straight on, you might not notice it. But when you do have it here at the side, the way that this bezel, um, you know, kind of blends in it to the protrusion of that box dome uh, crystal, I think that looks really good. Like it really does help kind of manage the visual weight and flow. Uh, the crown is a push pull and it is signed, you know, this is an M for Merker, or you could say that it's could be also hands on a clock, right? It could go either way, <laughs> um, but it, it's signed. So there's a lot of people that they, they look for that. One thing that is not the greatest is that uh, this doesn't apply. Uh, this doesn't have a hacking movement. So if you pull the crown out and try to set it, uh, the seconds hand is still gonna be running, but you know what, for a dressier watch, you know, ultimately uh, there's watches where there's not even a, uh, you know, any hour or minute index. So uh, having a non-hacking uh, movement, uh, you know, isn't the end of the world because I'm sure you're not picking this up for ultimate accuracy. Um, but for those of you that do enjoy that, uh, like myself included, um, that will be a bit of a disappointment. But at the price point, which did I mention the price point? $109? Yeah. Um, can't really get too upset. Now, are there always going to be those outliers that are going to have very high spec at a very low cost. Absolutely. But uh, not all of them are going to have this particular uh, combination of features and, uh, and design, uh, you know, uh, you know, different design languages that all kind of come together to create the theme of this Merker Levy. Now, uh, the case back is solid and etched, as you guys can see. Uh, the significance of the Lion to Merker, I don't know, unfortunately. Again, this doesn't really have like a full on website to where you can, uh, you know, see uh, a, a lot of uh, story being told. Um, you know, this is definitely a brand that is more so just a, a web shop. Um, and, you know, they have a business name and then they have a bunch of models and it's not necessarily, uh, you know, fully cohesive. And, you know, then that's what you trade up when it comes to the price point, right? You're, you're not paying for the extra history or anything like that or, you know, the grand brand, uh, uh, you know, messaging or anything like that, you know, if there is any messaging. So, um Getting back into the details here, the salmon dial has a dual finish printed sector dial with that brushed, uh, you know, track over the matte center. You also do get blued hands, and these don't look coated to me. They look thermally coated. Uh, I should say thermally blued, not coated, uh, just because there's uh, it's very even, right? And when you get it in the reflection here, you can see that that blue is just a very true blue versus being splotchy or anything like it was coated. Now. Let me get that. To, there we go. Back in focus. 50 meters of water resistance, which isn't bad. Not great either. 20 millimeter lug width drilled, which is nice. And you also do get quick release spring bars in this really nicely textured strap that does have a two millimeter taper down to 18 at the milled pin buckle. And you can see it does have that nice grain uh, that looks like uh, Safiano leather, which is a nice Italian leather. I don't no, or I don't think this is that, uh, but it does have that nice look. And I will say in terms of the pliability, very nice, doesn't require any break-in or anything like that. But with that said, let's actually get it on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay, guys. Now, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, this wears well. And although my wrist is on the larger side of average, um, you can see it's also quite round. So it's not like it's really flat and wide and super accommodating. Of course, if I do get my wrist a bit too close to the lens here, you're going to get some perspective distortion. It's going to make the watch head look much larger on my wrist. But if I keep my wrist nice and low and then just tighten up the frame, you can still take a more detailed look, but just add a little bit of a truer aspect ratio. So check that out. Really nicely centered. I think a great size for this type of watch at 38 and a half millimeters. And you can see very nice in terms of the way that it lays, very organic there, very simple, uh, old school style case that does have a slight drape, but for the most part, it's pretty flat at the mid case. The nice thing is it's compartmentalizing that visual heft by having the mid case render quite thin. And then you're gonna have those two steps that lead into the crystal and of course, a little step on the back for the case back. And you guys can also notice that this, uh, 
leather strap here is actually quite supple and just wraps around the wrist. There's no binding or anything like that. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. Check that out. So with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition and closing thoughts. Okay guys, now while there is no loom, of course, we gotta just see what this thing looks like in less than optimal lighting. Because you're not always gonna be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're gonna find yourself coming in out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. You include a bit of harsh lighting, which simply could expose any types of production defects. What you're going to see here is actually pretty consistent uh, brushing around that case. And of course, the dial playing with the light really nicely. And even though, you know, this is a bit of a lower contrast dial being salmon versus like, let's say a pale silver or a black, um, it's still quite legible. Uh, you can see here in the transitional lighting, you're going to be able to still see enough to see the sectors at the very least, right? Um, um, and then, of course, with better lighting, you're going to see that outer track as well. And then, you know, depending on the way the light is going to be reflecting, you never know when you might get a little bit of glint of blue. Check that out over that really cool handset. So really nice here. Um, you know, this is a handsome one. I think it would look great on like a gray strap probably to tie in a little bit better. But I think on the black, it definitely has more of a formal tone i think it'd look great also on like a navy blue uh you know of the same type of pattern with that safiano kind of style pattern giving it a bit of texture i think that'd be really nice but uh with that said let's actually get into the closing thoughts on the wrist where's well yeah very vintage in feel and appearance as you guys might have been able to tell in terms of model variants it's also available without a second hand um and a two-hand configuration for just 99 dollars. so uh even cheaper than this one at just over 100 you can get it for just under 100 uh without the seconds hand which i guess is good because you don't have hacking seconds anyway right so it'll make it easier to set the watch um it, you just won't get that nice sweep uh which at least here you are getting a bit of a nice sweep uh, on this unspecified manual mechanical wind movement now uh, in terms of the comparable models, although I'd say, you know, a different aesthetic, um, you know, it's not being a sector dial, uh, you know, comparable would be something like a Baltic MR01, I think which fills a similar niche, but costs yeah, five times more, uh, but Baltic is well known and they make great products. I've reviewed quite a few of them and own a few of them also in my personal collection. Um, so if you are looking at a Baltic and maybe you're just like, I don't want to pay that much for a dressy watch or a vintage watch um, that's not ultimately super robust or, you know, extremely water resistant. Uh, yeah, you could save some money and do something like this and fill a certain, scratch a certain itch in a similar way. But of course, uh, Merker brand appeal wise is not going to be a at the same level as Baltic. Um, and that's fair, right? Because again, you're saving money. So you're, you're just allocating what you're spending for. You're spending more for other things like the exact model versus necessarily, uh, you know, being in with a particular brand. Now, um, in terms of the bottom line, guys, if I was to sum this up, yeah, it's a lot of fun and a stylish, super affordable package, right around a hundred bucks. Uh, so it's hard to really be upset with this one and not be impressed just because it's a good looking watch. And I think that can be the main hurdle for folks regardless of price point is you know is it something that you want to enjoy looking at throughout the day and i think uh this is one that you could absolutely enjoy looking at throughout the day um and again for not a lot of money so with that said let me know what you all think down in the comments below if you like the video please like and if you're already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys hey.